five, seven, six, six, eight, nine, nine. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. These are the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live. The 50s were driven by fear of the atomic bomb. Living with the bomb was a reality for many. People were building atomic shelters in their backyards. It went as far as a couple spending their honeymoon inside one as advertisement. Children receiving dog tags so families could identify their bodies in the event of an attack, and defense guidance videos became mandatory in classrooms. There was a turtle by the name of Bert, and the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He ducked and covered. The 50s fear of the nuclear bomb seems so far away from our times, but recent bomb tests might tell a different story. Just this year, North Korea completed its sixth nuclear test and stated that it was the H-bomb. In the early 2000s, North Korea joined the list of countries that possess nuclear weapons. This and Kim Jong-un's fear of being overthrown are the reasons why people may have to learn again what it means to live with a bomb. The world is so worrisome that in 2017 the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to ICANN, the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. So why are we talking about this now? The main question regarding nuclear material is if nuclear weapons help keep world peace, or not. Some say they can, while thinking about the post-World War II period, and others, more idealistic, believe that as long as nuclear bombs exist, the world is not really at peace. Kim Jong-un's ways of ruling his country are making the world's leaders unease. They wonder if he can show the same restraint and rationality as the other countries currently in possession of nukes. So why isn't anyone taking action against North Korea? President Trump suggested that the United States would wage a war of fire and fury against North Korea if they failed to cease nuclear testing. In response, North Korea issued a series of threats against the US territory of Guam and allies such as Japan and South Korea. North Korea has always been under China's protective wing, so any military response against North Korea cannot be made without China's approval. And let's say the Pyongyang regime is no more. Who will take power? What would be the economic costs? Will the successors be any better? Who wants a new Iraq or Afghanistan? There are a lot of questions, but in the end, it all comes down to that one moment. And a red button. <laughs>